The message you're about to listen to is of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Have you found it? Not yet. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay, let's just have a seat. That, that will come on. Okay. I am to share with us uh, on the supernatural in ministry gifts. Praise the Lord. And of course, anything about ministry is supernatural. Right? Christianity itself is supernatural. There is nothing natural about Christianity. Are we following? Are we still following? Please pay attention. There is nothing natural about what? About Christianity. Praise the Lord. In fact, when you study 1 Corinthians 15, praise the Lord, he said that, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, praise the Lord from verse 45, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, right? I said, right? Then he said, but what? Praise the Lord. And so it is written, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Lord, help me. Give me speed. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening word, spirit. Now, notice that he called Jesus, not the second Adam, but the last Adam. Because when you say second, then you are giving room for thought. You are giving room for thought. You know, when you say this person is first, this is second, praise the Lord, then you are giving room for more. But when you say last, then you are not expecting another. So we find out that word, Jesus came, praise the Lord, to end Adamic, are you following what I'm saying? To end the Adamic, uh, how do I call it? Personality in spiritual concept. Are we following this? So he said, he said, the last Adam was made a quickening word. Spirit, a life-given spirit, speaking about his resurrection. Of course, First Corinthians 15, the entire context is resurrection. Follow me intelligently. Verse 46. Pay attention. Albeit, that was not forced, which is what? Spiritual. Come on. But that which is natural. So it means that what? The concept of the plan of God began with the natural. And going to the spiritual or the supernatural. Are you following what I'm saying? Go ahead again, you see. But that which is natural. But afterward, that which is what? Spiritual. So the goal of Adam was Christ. Resurrection. Are we following this? So the goal of the natural is what? Spiritual. So the destiny of Adam was Christ. Come on. Resurrected Christ. The destiny of the natural is spiritual. Are you following this? Afterwards. This is the plan of God. They go ahead, verse what? 47. The first man is of the earth. What? Earthy. The second man. Not again. He called Jesus the second man. So there have been two men, right? Hallelujah. I said there have been two men, right? So you are either in the first man or you are in the second man. Now pay attention. And the second man is from resurrection. So that's why there is the first creation that is the new creation. Are you following this? Now look at this. The first man is of the earth. Earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Speaking of spiritual. Again, you find that what? The destiny of the earthy is what? Heavenly. So you see the focus. You see the goal. You see the progression of the plan of God. From the natural to the spiritual. From Adam to Christ ultimately. And from the earthy to the heavenly. Now go ahead, verse 48. Lord, help me. Praise the Lord. Look at this. As is the earthy, such are they that are what? Earthy. As is the heavenly, such are they that are also what? Heavenly. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, you see, you see the destiny. So, the destiny of Adam, Christ. The destiny of the natural, supernatural, or spiritual. Praise the Lord Jesus. Spiritual. You know the word supernatural, as popular as it is, is not in the Bible. It's amazing, right? <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Okay? But we have equivalent spiritual. Of course, in everything spiritual is what? 
supernatural. All right? And any, anything heavenly is what? Supernatural. Right? So anything in Christ is what? Supernatural. So we see the destiny. So the progression was that God was going from Adam to Christ, from natural to what? To the supernatural, from the earthy to the heavenly, and ultimately from Christ to what? To Adam. Are we following this? So look at how he now describes it. To the, to the eaten that, praise the Lord, that when he bred into the man's nursery, okay, and he became what? A living soul. So he was going, he was actually prophesying about the resurrection. Are you following this? I said, are you following this? So that the natural man became living by breath in his lungs. Are you following what I'm saying? But the man in Christ will become alive by the giving of the spirit. So Adam got the, the living soul got breath. But the man in Christ got the spirit. So again, he's going from breath in the lungs to spirit within. So you see that the entirety of the progression is from the natural to what? To the supernatural. Now to make that happen, praise the Lord, he began with the reverse. In other words, he, because it will happen through him, so he left the spiritual to the natural. He left the supernatural to natural. He left the heavenly to the earthy. Are you what I'm saying? So he reversed his order Come on, that he might he might push his plan from the natural to the supernatural. Are you listening to these things that I am telling you? So God became a man, right? I say, right? So the spiritual became what? Physical. The supernatural became natural. Spirit became a man. The heavenly became healthy. Talk to me. Why? To make the earth heavenly. To make the natural, supernatural, to make man spiritual. Are you following what I'm saying? To make man spiritual. Now, Peter, so when he did that, and he got back to the throne, praise the Lord Jesus, he sits there as a man. Letting us know that now, there is now unity with divinity. So that letting us know that what we call Trinity is now unity in the believer as the spirit within. So now you say, I am one with Christ. Come on. I am one with the spirit. Why? Because of the spirit within. So when I say I am the righteousness of God in Christ, what I'm actually saying is that I got the spirit. Because all that God has gotten for us in all of this journey, he has given to us as the spirit. So, I will put my laws in their heart. That was how the prophet saw God giving us his spirit. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. Praise the Lord Jesus. What he means is that my spirit will remain in them forever. So, when I say I am holy, what I'm actually saying is that I got the spirit. When I say my sins are forgiven, glory to God, I am saying that God has given me his spirit. So the spirit within is the receipt of the fulfillment of the prophecy of the plan of God in moving man according to his calendar from the natural to the spiritual. So the spirit within is what qualifies or what describes that you are in the spirit. So in the spirit does not mean you are somewhere. You know, let us be in the spirit. Shh, 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 shh. You are trying to be in the spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. No, oh, in this being in the spirit is not you being somewhere. Being in the spirit is the spirit being in you. Come on. Huh? Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Ye are not in the flesh. Say, I am not in the flesh. He said, You have to be saying these things. I'm telling you. Say, I am not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Now look at what he says. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be. Not because you feel somehow. If so be that the spirit of Christ is in you. So because the spirit of Christ is in you, that is the meaning of being in the spirit. Come on. And if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, a cause of a key for her lot of Ownership, divine ownership is the spirit within. 
So when you say God knoweth those that are his, what it means is that God knows those he has given the spirit to. Are you listening to this? I'm trying to show you these things so you know that there is nothing natural in Christianity. In fact, we are not the natural experimenting the supernatural. Wait, when God became a man, come on, that was the first time he knew what it meant to be a man. So, God becoming a man in Christ, pay attention, praise, praise the Lord, was not God trying the supernatural. Rather, it was the supernatural experiencing the natural. So, when God became a man and Christ was walking, he knew for the first time what it meant to be hungry. Are you feeling what I'm saying now? So, he was not trying out or experimenting or experiencing the supernatural. What he was actually experiencing was the natural because he was supernatural. Come on. And that's where we have come to. See, if you do not understand this thing, you'll be weak as a believer, you'll be weak as a minister. Look at this. The ministry, the Christian life can only be lived supernaturally. I'm telling you. If you became one by the Spirit, you can only live as one by the Spirit. If you became a minister by the Spirit, you can only function as a minister by the Spirit. That's why you will see those who despise the place of the Spirit within the Spirit upon Look at this. They will struggle in ministry. Because any, any instruction that concerns ministry can only be supernaturally fulfilled. Hallelujah to God. Can only be supernaturally fulfilled. The spirit. Somebody said the spirit. Because it is the spirit that is at play now. Amen. We are in the spirit because we are we have the spirit. We are the righteousness of God because we have the spirit. In fact, he gave everything to us as the spirit. Talk to me. That's why I said our theology must be Christology. What is theology? You want to know God, right? God now came and said no man had seen God at any time. Eh? Wow. No man had a perfect picture of God. No man had, had made a, a correct argument about God. And he was referring to Genesis to Malachi, right? At any time, referring to Genesis to Malachi. He said, but he that dwelleth in the bosom of the Father, referring to himself, has declared him. Come on. Exigume. It means what you call exegesis. So he said, I am the exegesis of the Father. So, if Christ is the revelation of the Father, then what should be theology? Christology. Come on. And Christ has now come into us as the Spirit. So, our theology must terminate into Christology and our Christology must end as pneumatology. The Spirit. Are you following these things? Pay attention to these things that I'm telling you. Somebody say the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. So, ministry is essentially supernatural. And when you downplay the supernatural, you will be stuck in ministry. Come on. In any sense, whether you downplay supernatural concerning healing, you downplay supernatural concerning provision, you down, downplay supernatural, any downplay of supernatural will affect every other work to be supernatural. It's the same spirit. Come on. I say it's the same spirit. Praise the Lord. It's the same spirit. So in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, look at this. But by the grace of God, I am what? What I am. Powerful statement. By the grace of God, <laughs> I am what I am. Do you know why he made this statement? You will know him from the pretext. Look at this. Look at from verse 1. We're clear? We have to run through these things. I was, I was asking for speed. Praise the Lord. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which ye also what? Receive. And wherein ye stand. Verse 2. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Huh? Okay. Unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 3. 
For I did well unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4. And that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Verse 5. And that, now pay attention. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. So resurrection, right? Verse 6. Amen. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Of whom the greater part remained to this present, but some are falling asleep. Verse what? Seven. After that, it was seen of James. Then of all the world apostles. Verse eight. And last of all, it was seen of now. Last of all does not mean there are no more visions of Jesus. So he's not talking about cessation of the divinely granted appearances. Are you what I'm saying now? Because some people push that. They say last of all. So all Apostle Paul saw Jesus last. Praise the Lord Jesus. No. Last of all in context means last of all. All is this list. Okay? Because I have seen him again and again. Praise the Lord Jesus. Alright? Now look at this. And last of all he was seen of me as one born out of what? Due time. Now pay attention. See the way he's now describing himself now. That's why he was talking about the grace of God. Last of all, for I am the least of what? Now, he keep bringing himself forward. Lo, for I am the least of the apostles that I'm not even meet from last of all to the least. And now to I'm not even worthy. There's a reason. I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Then he was said, but by grace. I am what I am. Powerful statement. What is this grace of God? You see, what we call supernatural in ministry is the grace of God. What is working in Oikia is the grace of God. If you do not understand that, you will see as we go on that there is something about laboring with grace and grace laboring with you. Wait. Go ahead. But by the grace of God, I am what? What I am. So I am something by the grace of God. So he's talking about his spiritual person. He's talking about his ministry person. That's why he's talking about his past. But what I am now is the grace of God. So he's talking about his apostleship. He's talking about his office. He's talking about his, uh, how do I call it? He's talking about his ministry gift. Come on. Because that's what is in focus. Not his education. Come on. Not his family. Not his surname. But you see, that ministry side of me, hallelujah to God, it is the grace of God. So, there is, there is Philips, okay? But there is Apostle Philips. That Apostle Philips uh, is the grace of God. Because that cannot be made naturally. That can only be made what? Supernaturally. The grace of God. You will understand as we go on. Now, pay attention. By grace I am what I am. Now pay attention. And his grace, which was bestowed. So it was bestowed. So, so it's a bestowed grace. So what we become by grace is bestowed. The word bestowed is given. The word given is imparted. Pay attention. The grace which was what? Bestowed upon me was not in vain. Oh, glory be to God. Have you heard Paul said that we do not frustrate the grace of God? Grace of God can be frustrated. Grace of God can be in vain. Wait. Look at this. But what? Pay attention. I. I. Don't forget. I was not the Pharisee Paul. I is Apostle Paul. That he became by the grace of God. So I... This minister, this ministry person, this office, this expression that you see, I labor more abundantly than they are yet not I. But the grace of God which was with me. So it is even the grace that labors. <laughs> Have you found some people eh, you copy the cell system, you fail. Huh? You copy the address sense, you fail. 
you copy their accent, you fail. Amen to God. Because it's the grace of God. You cannot copy grace. You can't copy grace. Pay attention also. That's why Reverend Femi was saying that when you are not careful to separate people from who they were or who they are as individual, from who they are as the grace of God. If you are not careful, you cannot discern both of them and you are now attacking them as the grace of God. Are you what I'm saying now? You will not find that if what grace will not operate through you. It's the same spirit. Come on. You didn't get it. You are attacking Pastor Chris, for instance. And for some reason, there are, there are certain things that are rubbed off on you from Pastor Chris. Now, something now happened. If you are past Pastor Chris's ministry, and then you now take Pastor Chris. And then you now start talking about Pastor Chris only for you to go to your crusade. And I found that that same grace is not operating again. It's one spirit. Look at this. And the, this grace of God hears. Eh? This grace of God is intelligent. The anointing is intelligent. The anointing has intelligence of its own. The man of God does not have to be there. The an, it's one spirit. You see, if the spirit of God is in you, don't talk against a man of God. It's one spirit. So it's not his ears that hear it. It is the spirit within you. Because it's the same spirit within him. So if you have said it, he has heard it. You see, people need to understand spirituals. That's when it comes to some of these things, you will never see me there. I understand the grace of God, my brother. <laughs> because I am one. By the grace of God. I know what I am by the grace of God. Come on. And I know I'm not the only one. I teach God's word. But so that I can learn too. That's why there are other teachers. Otherwise I've become the only teacher, right? But when you now have alpha male personality, eh? I now think that, praise the Lord Jesus, that you are the teacher. Teacher like no other. And you are not listening to other teachers. You're crashing the day. Because you will, you will lack some grace of God. Don't forget, ministry is the grace of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Ministry is the grace of God. And this grace of God is, implies the spirit of God. And it is the same. That's why a grace irreverent Femi can suddenly begin to function in your life. And that grace started functioning in Reverend life by somebody. You will see, it is one grace. Talk to me. So you have enhancement of the grace or you have inhibition of the grace to the degree that you attack the grace in another fellow. It's the same grace. A lot of people are attacking people who have what they want to be experiencing. And they think that it is different. No. There are diversities of gift, but it is one spirit. Are you listening to this? What I'm saying? Let me hurry up because there's so much to say. So he said, I labored more than what? Talk to me. I labored more than what? Yet not I. So when you see the things that Paul was able to take, it was not him. Because all that could do attempt it. Even though they try. That's why you find out that sometimes you see a man of God, you want to attempt the things the man of God is doing freely. And you fail even before you start. Hallelujah to God. So, you see the apostles where he wonder about the ministry of Paul. Who is this guy? Paul said, it is the grace of God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, what is this grace of God? Hallelujah to God. Don't forget, he said, it is the grace of God that labored. So, the Paul's greatness was not in his education. Paul's greatness, because he dropped his education, right? Come on. You know, Paul was somebody that you call a first class student today in our modern time from Harvard. He was a Pharisee of Pharisee. But his greatness in ministry was not from there. 
Paul was heavily connected. Come on. Paul, as a young man, went to the high priest and took letter. That look, anyone that call on the name of Jesus Christ, I will pursue them and bring them. That was some connection. When Stephen died, Paul said, any person that has problem with the death of Stephen, this is something I leave behind. You can meet me. That's powerful. Hallelujah to God. So he was heavily connected. He had connections in the corridors of power. But his greatness had nothing to do with that. Come on. I guess what I'm saying. He said his greatness was the grace of God. Somebody say the grace of God. So you know this grace is spiritual, right? You know this grace is supernatural, right? And you know this grace is a walking of the spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, how did Paul get this grace of God? This grace of God, <laughs> was, it, was it by inheritance? How come this grace of God is in Paul and is not in the others? Producing that kind of greatness and labor that the other apostle could not even dream of. Apostle Peter, referring to Paul, said according to the wisdom God has given him. That kind of statement from Peter. You will know that he did research and became stuck. He could not trace it anywhere. He said, ah, this must be a wisdom that God has given him. Now, if I was Paul said, if I was Peter, I said, according to the wisdom God gave him, then Apostle Peter is implying that he did not have that wisdom. He did not say according to the, gift, the wisdom God has given us. No, that God gave him. Look at this. He said, equate. Come on. In some of his epistles, eh, of which some things are hard to understand. Yet, if you ask Paul, Paul will say it is the grace of God. So, this is the secret of supernatural innovation. Oh man, the kilo profufa kafaya tahaya. The grace of God. And I will assure you, all of us here now, there is this grace of God. Our issue many times is its expression. And you will see how this thing gets expressed. You will see how this grace works in your life. How you can open more flow of this grace. Are you following what I'm saying? You will see. Now, praise the Lord Jesus. I say praise the Lord. So, I ask the question. Is this grace customized? Is it customized grace? Paul customized grace. How come others didn't have it? Was God partial? Praise the Lord Jesus. Or... Was this something about Paul? Come on. Was this something about Paul that attracted that grace? Something about Paul that the others did not have. Certain dedication and consecration. Certain discipline that the others could not even attempt. Are you aware that Apostle Paul left no heir? Sacrifice sir. that the man left no one to continue his name. Huh? Look at what he said. He said, Have we no right to lead the bout system? I like that scripture. <laughs> yeah? And he was talking about the right of a minister over the congregation yeah? who we'll go where to warfare at any time at his own child. Uh, who laboreth in the vineyard and does not eat of the vineyard. Have we no right to lead the body sister? What you say that the man of God who has raised themselves sometimes can look at them uh, and say, you there. I think I like you. <laughs> As a right. <laughs> As I like you, I want to marry you. Not to flirt with them, it's to marry you. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, he said, like Peter. So Peter couldn't make that sacrifice. Other apostles couldn't make that sacrifice. 
the torture Paul accepted. He said, even the spirit will be prophesying. They prophesy everywhere. If you go to that Jerusalem, they will kill you. And the disciples, who, fellow ministers, will be begging him. Don't go to Jerusalem. One time, Apostle Paul said, what is the meaning of this? Why do you say these things and break my heart? They were having their heart broken that Paul was going to Jerusalem to go and die. Apostle Paul said, you are breaking my heart. I am not just willing to suffer. I want to die. They have to be something. But I attracted that grace of God. Hallelujah. And <laughs> after this conference, you will find certain expression in your life. Look at this. By the grace of God, amen, you will enter into certain disciplines. Amen to God. Are we still together? The grace of God. Amen. Let me uh, let you into what Jesus said about this grace. Look at uh, Matthew 25. Quickly, the parable of the talent. You remember the parable of the talent? I just write it down, Matthew 25, uh, 14 to 15, because of time, since we already know the parable. Look at this. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like what? A man going, you know, on a journey. He said, and he called his servants and gave them what? Talent. Pay attention. He gave one one. He gave one two. He gave one five. Now, hear this statement. He said, he gave them severally according to their abilities. The word ability there is dunamis. It means inherent resourcefulness. So, he did not give anyone Come on, what that person did not have capacity for. Do you understand that? Number two, so he did not determine what he gave them, they determined. So it was not like he decided to give that one, he gave one, one. He saw that he cannot handle two. It's not that he did not want to give the one that he gave to five. I feel what I'm saying now. But the guy cannot undo three. But he, can, he, but he has more capacity than one. The one he gave five is not because he couldn't have given him ten. But if he gave him ten, attention, he would not have ability to undo it. Are you this what I'm saying? Now, pay attention. This is very crucial. And it was not that he had just eight talents. He had talent. So he went away with more talent. Do you understand what I'm saying? He came with a lot of talent. And went away with a lot of talent. Because the one he was going away with, he couldn't give them because they don't have ability for it. So, we do not determine. I mean, God does not determine the grace that comes to us. We do. So, I see a lot of people looking for impartation where they don't have capacity to carry it. So, so a man of God will lay hands on them, but the capacity cannot come to them. Because the grace of God is intelligent. He said, you will not put a novice in the place of authority. The word novice means inexperience. So if, he, if God will not put you in an office because you desire it, God puts you in an office because you can be in that office. Now pay attention. And once you have the capacity for that office, even without your knowledge, you will attract the grace. Ah, you will hear something today. Are you following this, what I'm saying? In a great house, there are vessels, right? Some unto honor, some unto what? Dishonor. You know the story. Now pay attention to this. Then he said, the word honor and dishonor, they are not word and opposite. Okay? Okay? Honor means honorable use. If You know vessels, utensils. In your house, for instance, 
If I come to visit you, there are certain glass ways you will use to serve me. Why or no? Come on. Some of us have breakable stored in certain places that you bring out during Christmas. <laughs> you understand? So he said, vessels unto honor, special use. He said, but there are vessels unto dishonor. Dishonor is not insult, you know, for regular use. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? And don't forget the implication is the house of God. So there are many of us that if God wants to do certain things in this city of certain magnitude, you will hear God. Yeah, attention. And it is not knowledge, you. Huh? It is the grace of God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And I'll shock you. Hmm. Our greatest achievement in ministry will be by the grace of God, not by knowledge. You see, the reason a lot of people are inefficient, sir, is because they are looking for knowledge and now they have knowledge they don't need. You don't need every knowledge. You see the way I broke down theology now. That's why you don't see me teach certain things. They are not necessary. Who did King marry? What's my business? What's my business? The celestial quarters. What's, what's, my, what's my business? People, look at this, hear this, hear this and let it affect you. People have done mighty things with less knowledge. And people are still doing mighty things for God with less knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the grace of God. It is the grace of God. So, they, <laughs> Or should the knowledge you need. You don't need all knowledge. Hallelujah. Concerning spiritual, you have a whole library concerning spiritual. Whereas concerning spiritual, 1 Corinthians 12 is no more than two sheets. Is that you are a bad student or you have a bad teacher or both? The whole teaching on the things of the Spirit, sir, is no more than three pages, depending on your Bible. Even Gideon International, that small Bible, is still no more than three pages. So the question you ask yourself is that, did the Corinthians understand it? So if they understand it, and it is three pages, and you, you have turned your kitchen to notes, uh-uh. Uh-uh. It tells you that God is telling you something. You don't need some of this knowledge. Huh? Say, help me, Jesus. So, do we see the parables? Okay, I was talking about uh, Timothy. So, he said, look at what he said. If any man purify himself from this, he has explained some things. These demonstrative adjectives. Okay? These uh, Plural, proxima. Okay, not those. That would be far, right? So, there are some things he has just finished discussing in the preachers. So, he said, if you purify yourself from these, you will become what? A vessel. Of... Did you see this? So, it therefore means that you can change the, the structure and function of the vessel that you are. Oh! Caporondo Sikaya. 97, was it 97 or 98? There about. First of all, I just came from a crusade in Ondo State. And then I got home. I was saying in Ibadan. Then. Then I was going towards the kitchen. Okay? As I uh, walked past my room, I saw the whole room lit with light. And it was not like this light. You get? It. So I was like, ah, how come there is light? What kind of a light is this? So I wanted to go to the kitchen, probably to take water. You know, I just returned from a crusade. So, but I was fascinated by the last. Ah, who put on light inside this room? When I opened the door, I saw Jesus sitting on my bench. You know, there was the bed and then there was the bench. You know, long bench. That way. Jesus was sitting there. The light was coming from him. So I was like, who? Oh, Jesus. And then he looked at me, smiled, and seemed and was hitting the bench. 
you know, was sitting like this, was hitting, as if telling me, come and sit down. So, I, I, I forgot that I was, I was going to take water. You know, moments like that, you forget. I ran there, and then I sat down. And then I found out that it seemed to be writing, so he was focused on something. So, I was there, talk to me, talk to me. He wasn't, he wasn't talking. So, while he was sitting that way and was writing, I moved this hand, pushed my head on that, and put my, my head on his laps. So, I looked at him in the eye. You know, he was looking like this. So, I was not looking at him that way. And then he looked at me, and then I put my two hands together. And I said, and I started doing them this way. And I said, Lord, please use me. Lord, please use me. So that should be 97 or so. And it was a serious appeal. Lord, please use me. Lord, please use me. And then I seemed to catch his attention. Then he just looked at me. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Amen. It's like I'm saying it again right now. And then he looked at me, and then he said, I'm already using you. And then in an instant, I started running through. Of course, before then, I've seen like three or four dead bodies raised. I was just coming from a crusade. You know, I was seeing, I, I, I was seeing a lot of the But I felt there was more. So, in my spirit, I was like, so that's all. You know, I didn't say it out. So, I was just, I was just so that's all. And then he seemed to be hearing my thoughts. So he looked at me, he said, son, the measure of you that you give me, that's what I will use. He said, I will never intrude on your life. Oh, party, believer, so And then when he said that, bam, he was gone. I knew that day, I determined how much God used me. So God used me is not a prayer. You become useful. So, God will use you to the degree that you are useful. How many of us have clothes that you don't use? Why? They are not useful. So, you become useful. Your usefulness, come on, will determine the grace of God that is coming on your life to produce certain labor. Are we following this sense? You know, Matthew 25 was a parable, right? Come on. I said it was a parable, right? Did you notice that there was no conversation in that parable among those who got the talent? Do you notice that there was no record that they were conversing? Come on. Praise the Lord. And that's the problem today. Today, somebody that has five is encouraging the one that has two. You can do more. You can do more. Are you I'm saying? Don't you see I'm doing fine? He will die. He does not have the ability. Let me say, gentlemen, no matter what you go and learn, are you I'm saying? No matter your association, God, certain grace will not work through you that you are not useful for. Come and talk to me. Can I shock you? Even if you are in your village and you are in a corner, in an obscurity, doing ministry, but you are useful for more, grace will find you. Oh, I don't know if you are following what I'm saying. I have a friend on Facebook. I think you wrote something about him. This, uh, uh, some, 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 uh, Chaya or something. That evangelist. The evangelist was going passionate for the work of the gospel. Evangelism and all of that was going from village to village. In his own village, he didn't come on social media, was not looking for clout, was not, was not chasing anything. He was just passionate about the work of an evangelist. In his integrity and sincerity, he was just organizing small, 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 small crusades, you know, in communities, on streets, and all of that. Praise the Lord Jesus. And he was constantly developing himself for more. And somebody cited him. How that person cited him? Cited him in divine orchestration. And that person said, wow, come with me. And the guy took him out of this country. This young man that I'm telling you now, eh, he's doing mighty things 
with the spirit of an evangelist. Look at this. God found him in a corner in a village. Praise the Lord Jesus. Not association, not anything, because the anointing sees. Let me give you a little testimony about my own life. I am in worry. What can I worry? Doing my thing and consistent this way. You see, the places that God has announced me, I want that tomorrow. How they got to know me. Come on. Yet you will not see me pursuing one thing. You will not see me tagging myself to one thing. I have met people, sir. Eh? You will never see my picture and them on social media. It's not in that. Some people are not serious with ministry. When you are serious with ministry, sir, you become discreet about some things. You let it be a revelation, an announcement of Jesus. Let him display your strength. So what do I do? I just keep developing myself in my corner. I have prayer timetable. Praise the Lord. On Tuesday, 8 to this one, I pray for certain things. 9 to that one, I pray for that because I just believe in prayer focus. You know, sometimes when you say, yeah, my finances, it blew. My, it blew. You know, you just throw powers <laughs> everywhere. You know, so what I do is that I can focus on my health. Praise the Lord Jesus. You see, you see the way I am looking like this. Uh, Ikala. You know the meaning of Ikala? You don't own. It's your woman. I pray for my head. It satisfies my mouth with good things. My youth is renewed as an ego. Now, as I make power available, all of them concentrated and focused. That was my body. So in two hours, three hours, that power is concentrated on my body. Then in another three hours, it's my finance. I have that and consistently so. See, this thing builds capacity that it does not matter where I am. Once, once God find me useful for certain expression, he will come and meet you there. You see people trying to review themselves. It doesn't work. Somebody said the grace of God. Hallelujah. We just read parable. Okay? Let's see the reality. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. Ephesians 4 7. But to everyone, everyone, pay attention, is given grace according. Don't forget, he gave them severally according. To everyone is given grace, the grace of God. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. The word gift of Christ, Doria, is not the gift that we receive from Christ. It's the gift that Christ is. Charisma is an endowment. Are you know what I'm saying? But Doria, the Holy Ghost for instance is a Doria as a gift to us. Come on. But the gifts of the Spirit through us, you know, I will discuss that in another session. The gifts of the Spirit through us, okay, is charisma. That is an endowment. But there is a gift that the Spirit is. There, is a, there are gifts of that gift, which is an, a manifestation through us. Oh, I wish you were following what I'm saying. You know, what we have received from God is the gift of the Spirit. That is the gift that the Spirit is. Understand what I'm telling you? What you call the gifts of the Spirit are not gifts to us. They are given through us. Which are manifestation of the spirit. If I give my sister a word of knowledge now. I didn't receive word of knowledge. She received word of knowledge. It is the one who benefited. That received. So when he said to everyone is given. Everyone is congregational. Not everyone in isolation. Now concerning spiritual brethren. Brethren. So he was talking, he was writing to the church, not to individual. In fact, there is no way the gift of the spirit is taught. It does in statement or implication to an individual. 
It's usually what? Congregational. What is it then when ye come together? Everyone heart. Everyone heart what? To give. When you come together, one person cannot come together, right? And he called the Jawadi. Are you following? Are you listening to what I'm saying now? So, what we call the gift of the Spirit is singular. We have all received what? Received what? The gift, the Doria, that the Spirit is. What you have is the gift that the Spirit is. You don't need what we call gifts of the Spirit. The one who needs it is the one who gets it through you. So, you call it the manifestation of the Spirit. Because it is grace, it is free. That's why it's a gift. But the gift of the Spirit is the Spirit. What you have is not the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. If you think like that, you only see word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Not because you now have it, but because your faith is high. You expect that it will operate. So it will operate. Because it responds to faith. So that's why you find some people say, my own is prophecy. No, your own is not prophecy. Your own is the Holy Spirit. The reason you say prophecy is because you see prophecy. The reason you see prophecy is because that's the one you expect. Because you have this belief that that's what God has given you. So that's what flows through you. It's a bit to you according to your faith. But when you know that the gift you have is the spirit, when you stand, that guy needs the gift of healing to come out of you to that person. Because it's a manifestation of the spirit which you have. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Quickly, sir, because of time. But unto every one of us is given what? Doria, that's what I'm trying to explain. According to the measure of the gift, that is the gift that Christ is. You know, Christ is the gift of God to us, right? Salvation, righteousness, and all of that. And Christ in you is the same as the Spirit in you, right? Okay? And it's the same as being in Christ, right? Being in Christ is not a location. If any man be in Christ, it's not an address. If you look at it from verse 15, it's identification. Okay? It's identification. So which one is more important? Is it Christ in you or you being in Christ? There's no need for, for that kind of argument. You can't, you can't argue things like that. Being in Christ is the same as Christ in you. You can't say one is important when one is more important. I you what I'm saying now? <laughs> Let me leave that one, Jared. Because some of us just argue over unnecessary things. Look at this. According, I need to explain, according to the measure, the word measure means degree. Come on. I say it means degree. And it was used, praise the Lord, like three times in that text. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are we still together here? I say, are we still together? Oh, para de gizo kovondu vigia. Nembra de ni kosku pafakaya. Okay? According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Praise the Lord. That's verse 7, right? I say, right? Okay? We see another use of that word, measure, verse 13. Quickly, can you just, can we just hop to verse 13? Okay? Till we all come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, and of the perfect, but unto the measure. Again, till we all come, means that it is in degree. Then look at verse 16. Okay? Let us hop to verse 16. Praise the Lord. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted with that which every day supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. So every part brings a measure. What I'm trying to let you see is that measure can be measured. So what is he telling you? That the grace of God come to you according to something. And that thing, pay attention, is in your honors. According to the measure of your relationship with the gift that Christ is. You know, we say Christ is in me. Christ is in me. How much do you acknowledge that? How much does that affect you? How much have you grown in that consciousness? Look at this. It's the same thing. Galatians 4.19. He said, my son, for whom I travel again, or the Christ before me, you. That gift of Christ that is in you is the beginning. There is a place by spiritual growth, acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus, that that Christ will now be formed in you. Christ is formed in you. It's not, 
You don't say new creation. There's something like Christ for me. Christ is already in me. Christ is already in me. That's why you are where you are. There is something like Christ being formed in you. Let me go shock you. The Pauline prayers. Another one. He said that. He said that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. And he was talking to believers. So if you say, Christ is already in me, how did you know? Was it not Apostle Paul? Who said that? Was it not Apostle Paul? Either you have a problem or Apostle Paul does not know what he was talking about. Apostle Paul who told us that Christ is in us said, I am not traveling. Traveling means labor over you again, Galatians. I have to go all over these things again because they were born again, but they were romancing the law. You know, so I have to now begin all the classes again until Christ be formed in you. What does that mean? Spiritual growth. In the in Christ reality, in the Christ in you reality, in both his benefits and responsibility. See, Christ is in you, Christ is in you. There is a level of acknowledging. There is a level of interaction with this gift that Christ is in you that pushes you to ministry. You say Christ is in you. He has been in you for 10 years. You have not taken any work of ministry. You say Christ is in you. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. When, you, when, when, we, when we are talking about giving, that's where you feel like you're in it. Anytime giving is measured, there is a feeling. There is, you, you, you suddenly become sort of. I cannot shock you. Look at this. Measure of the gift of Christ include giving, sir. If you acknowledge what God has given you, Christ, and his role, what it means to you, nothing will be too much for you to hold back. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not along with him freely give us all things? Pale, pale. Look at what he said. He said, if one died for all, then we are all dead. Come on. Therefore, they that live should no longer live unto themselves, but unto him that died for them and rose again. Because this is your life. You were dead. Now somebody now gave you life. So to leave it unto yourself means that you have no acknowledgement of that gift. Look, don't be deceived. Somebody can be prayerful. Eh? Somebody can be very prayerful and very given to evangelism and very given to eternal reality. Except when you start talking about giving. See, because, look at this. If people's money are not involved in ministry work, they don't feel they have a stake. I'm just, your money is not in something. So why should you be bothered? You heard that one story view the fell. You know why you did not cry? You don't have money there. You have no stake there. So I'm just saying, eh, so he fell? Ah, oh. oh, so what are they doing? You don't feel it. But if your money was there, suppose you, are, you wanted to rent a part of it. Ah, even this conference, before you come to this conference, you say, Say, you know, you know that I'm still, I'm still having it. That's why he said, where their treasure is, that's where their heart will be. What will commit people to ministry work, minister, listen to me, is that they have a stake. So if you don't teach your people to give, you are not teaching them to have a stake in the ministry. Huh? A guy came to Jesus. What was that to have eternal life? When you hear that guy, Talking like that. In a meeting like this, so, sir, I have a question, sir. Eh, eh, Rabbi, eh, Jesus, are they here? Are they here? So, who is asking? Hold on, Nami, Nami. What's your problem? I have a question. He did not ask question about money. What must I do to have eternal life? Oh, how he likes eternal life. How this is, is it, this is what we are talking about. You must be eternal life conscious. Jesus said, so You know the commandment. Look, look at this again. He now blew Jesus' mind. So you know the commandment, thou shalt say, sir, sir. all of these things I have kept from my youth. Perhaps sir, Jesus loved him. Ah! He was a rich young ruler. He was young. He was rich. He was a ruler. What else was he looking for? He said, what more do I lack? He started like brother. Until Jesus said, you lack one thing. Ah! Have you kept commandment from your youth? And you are this conscious of eternal life. Look at what he lacked. Give it. Go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. We didn't hear the man again. <laughs> In fact, the Bible says he left what? So rough. The contextual Greek rendering, like he lost somebody. You know, you know the feeling where you lost somebody. They've not taken his money from him. Is he had his money? 
The very thought of giving made him sorrowful. It happens so. The moment you talk about rejoice, everybody is rejoicing. You talk about giving. When you talk about giving, there's a sorrow that comes as a people. That's to let you know that they are idol worshippers. Can I shock you? That the only thing Jesus talked about. Have you seen that the Bible references concerning money is very bad? Go check. The rich guy, we just talk about one. The rich fool was not a giver. The rich man at Lazarus was not a giver. Amazing. Jesus now said you cannot serve God and mama. Nothing competes with God, with that Christ in you like money. Some of you will go to Abuja for wedding. I shall be. You will buy you. But you will not give yourself. You are an idol worshiper. For that I shall be, you must worship your idol. So you must go and buy it. For London, some of you, the pledge you have pledged in Oikia, you still have not fulfilled. Because Satan, he said, why has Satan put it in your heart? Ah! So I'm not deceived that the brother is not concerned about eternal life. In my assembly, brothers that are everywhere working, I said, I hope you are giving to. Very important. That is nothing test. The test of a believer's measure of the gift of Christ. A major one is money, sir. And God has said that some of us, your hold on money is more than Christ's hold on you. That's why certain grace will not come to you. You are in ministry. Certain money is coming to you. You are asking for partnership. You would rather have people's money to do the ministry that God has given you that for your own money to be there. You will use your money to buy suits. You will use your money to buy shawarma. And then you are now asking people to support you. You are like the worshiper. You can't have it. It is given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. You say Christ is in you. What can you give up because of that? You say Christ is in you. What habits have you broken out of? Because Christ is in you. You say Christ is in you. What has that made you to do? That you will not do if he was not in you. Christ is in you. How has that guided your steps, your stops, and your turns? To that degree, it gives you a measure of the gift of Christ. Because you know you are worthy of that investment. Some of us are too selfish, too self-centered for the grace of God. Some of us are too prayerless, too careless for the grace of God. Some of us are too abusive for the grace of God. Some of us like to inherit people's enemies. No, somebody did not do anything to you. Your mentor has problem with somebody. Say, the enemy of my friend is my enemy. And you are looking for the grace of God. According to the measure. Do you understand this measure I'm talking about? That's how it comes. The measure of the gift of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. The measure of the gift of Christ. The measure. So, you see some of these fathers, Reverend Kisoya Kilume, for instance, will go to Love World ground to pray. He will go in the morning. They will come and carry him. Because he won't be able to stand again. They will come and literally carry him. And then, you see him spread his hand. And you see miracles happening. There is a gentleman. There is a gentleman. It is according to the measure. There's no partiality in it. Some of us will never receive the grace of God till Jesus will come. Come on. Because you never invest in things that brings the grace of God. Christ is in you, right? Right? It's Christ in her. So, so if, you do no, if you have no honor for her, eh, then you don't know Christ in you. Because it's the same Christ. Have you, have, do you know that quench not the spirit, grieve not the spirit, is nothing that we do to the spirit. It's what we do to one another. Go read it. The context, malice, strife, and all that is quench not the spirit. 
God is the same spirit. Hallelujah. According to every one of us is given grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Let's see the grace. Verse 8. Wherefore he say it. Do you see he's going to ministry gift? Come on. I said, do you see he's going to ministry gift? So, what he called the grace of God is ministry gift. Ladies and gentlemen, I am called by God to be an apostle, right? It's a grace. Come on. That works that apostleship. The evangelist, sir, is a grace oh, that works that kind of work. That's why you see people say the apostle and there is no such working. It's not in time to. It is in grace. So what we call apostleship is a grace. Is the grace of God working in certain way. What you call the prophet is the grace of God working in certain way. And that grace of God, look at this, it's not automatic. You know, some people think that you become a prophet. You know, people say they become prophet from birth. You can become a prophet from birth by prophecy. Come on. But not by reality. Eh? You, you can, somebody, a, a woman can be pregnant. And then somebody come and prophesy. And that child will be a prophet. That's not what makes the child a prophet. The prophet is seeing the future. Are you what I'm saying now? Are you what I'm saying? But to see the future means there is a present. And there is a journey there. So when you eventually come into that place, that grace of God comes for you, that was what that prophet saw that day. So he's not telling you that you are a prophet now. Are you listening to this? I'm telling you. So let's finish this. Wherefore, you see, when he ascended up on high, he led what? Captivity, captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now pay attention now. Again, don't forget, he's explaining the grace that comes according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So meaning that depending on your spiritual growth, Come on. Your embrace of the Christ in me reality. How you undo the gift of Christ in me. That spiritual growth. What it has made you to forbid. What it has made you to allow. Come on. We now determine the grace that will be given you. Are you following this and I'm saying? In explaining what this grace is, he say he call it again ministry gift. Wherefore he said, when he left captivity, he, left gift, he gave gift what? Pay attention. Pay attention. I'm about to hit something now and I'm going to close. Then when I come back, I will continue. Pay attention to this. He gave what? Gift unto men. So everyone is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So the gift is given. Is that is what he called grace, right? Context. He's not explaining. He's not called it the, the gift of God. Verse 9, verse 10 is what you call parenthesis. Because verse 9 you know, you know, he has said, wherefore, okay, look at it, now that he ascended, that's why he's in bracket. Come on now. You understand? That's why he's in what? He's in bracket. Because he's just trying to explain something to you. But however, what is supposed to be from verse 8 to verse 11. He gave gifts unto men, verse 11. He gave some. So, he now put verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, he tried to explain to you that when you hear that he ascended, that must be that he first descended, right? And the one that descended is the one that ascended. You know, just giving us some further information. But however, it's supposed to just go straight from verse to verse. So let's do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so that for the, for the flow of thought, that one is just by the side. And he gave some what? The grace of God. So, apostle is the grace of God that comes to, look at this, that comes to men. Because of certain things that God has found in them. So, because of this measure, this level of formation of Christ in this man, this level of Christ dwelling in this man's heart by faith, this man's constraint, oh glory to God, by the love of Christ, this man's honor by the love of Christ, this man's commitment, consecration, discipline by the love of Christ, has opened him up for a grace of apostleship. This man's flair and dare, come on, has opened him up for a grace that he can do the work of an evangelist. Come on. Have you noticed that 
This grace of God is very, is, is a very huge and funny thing. You see an evangelist and you want to be like him, but you can't. You desire it. But something inside of you is not even going there. I was born a Muslim, raised a Muslim. Okay? My father was a sheikh. My entire family, praise the Lord Jesus, everyone was a Quran scholar. Now, Jesus appeared to me three days consecutively in 1993. September 9, September 10, September 11. The three days consecutively. September 12, I went to church from that vision. Okay? Became born again. Then, 94, he appeared to me again, had me knelt down, put his two hands on me, and then he said, I am putting hands on you and ordaining you for ministry. So, I, I saw that first before I was physically ordained to ministry. Are you what I'm saying? And he, and he kept coming like that. Pay attention. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. There was a point I wanted to make. Lord, help me. Koso, prafa, teli. Okay. All right. Now, when I came over to the faith, because of my, my Quran knowledge, ministers were coming and telling me that, ah, you could reach Muslims. You see that? You could reach Muslims. That is the reason. You could reach Muslims. I have never had any flair to be pursuing Muslims. I have led Muslims to Christ. But I don't carry it on my head that because of this thing that I know, because I know Quran, I should be able to handle Muslim. No, sir. You are getting it wrong. Muslim will not get born again by my knowledge of Quran. Because if they will get born again by my knowledge of Quran, they know Quran. They would have been born again already. So what will get them born again is not Quran. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, I know people that came from Islamic background got sent into... Why? There will be certain flair they have that I don't have. So God does not see me fit for that kind of assignment. And I will not force myself because uh, if they quote it, I know it. No! No! That's why you will die. This grace of God, eh, as it labors in you, will protect you in the labor. Did you see Jesus appearing to Paul and say, I will deliver you from this man? To whom I send you. He didn't send you somewhere. You are calling for deliverance. Let me finish this. Do you see this? Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and what? Pay attention. For the perfecting of... Wait. So these people have gotten the grace of God now. Abby. What do they do? They come to church like this. As a grace of God now, apostleship, as a grace of God in his life. Pay attention to what? what why this conference now? We are perfecting the same. What are we perfecting the same for? The work of ministry. Wait. The work of what? Ministry. So what we are doing now is to help you increase your measure of the gift of Christ so that you can now be, you can attract certain grace to do the work of ministry. That's the perfect in the saint. So that from this conference, for instance, depending on your understanding and embrace of certain truth that you have applied yourself to, the impartation of certain things can work on you. When I come back, I'm going to show us that this grace of God does not come from heaven. It comes from men. Apostleship, pay attention to what I'm saying to you, does not come from heaven. According to a measure of the gift of Christ, God gives you grace through men. He gave gift unto men through what? Through men. His impartation. As we are here right now, there are some of us that are fit for certain things. And you are in this conference today. And sometimes that's the reason God put this conference in your heart. That's the reason. Conferences like this are to bet ministry gift. I'm telling you. You see, we need to, we need to get back to this conversation. Guys in the ministry need to understand how these things work. Come on. There is a memo as to how these things work. Conferences like this, the reason God bets conferences like this is to give grace to men. Because he has found certain measure of the gift of Christ that requires certain grace for them to function a certain way in ministry work. I don't know if you are following what I'm saying. Huh? This is my brother for instance. You are a resident person now, right? Good. Can you stand? Huh? But you were not before. So how come you are now? You think it's election? That grace found you fit. I came to you. 
the things you are doing now, eh? You are shocked to yourself. Come on. But you kept attending meetings. You kept attending meetings. Can I tell you how it happened? When the hands were laid on you, because God sees. Your father who see it in the secret will reward you openly. Many times that open reward eh, is him coming out and telling you, I saw your effort. Now this is the place. I'm telling you. There's no kalo kalo in this year. If you like, pay money. It will come. Oh. The gift of God cannot be purchased with money. Can you see my brother? Amen to God. I said, Amen to God. Apostle Paul is talking now. How did Apostle Paul get to that grace? You know, Apostle Paul saw Jesus, right? Did he see Jesus? Good. But he was not born again because he saw Jesus. Apostle Paul became born again when Ananias came. Act 9, Act 22, Act 26. Come on. When Ananias came, pay attention. Ananias led Paul to Christ, got him born again, baptized him in water. Put hands on him to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That is, he spoke in tongues, right? Put hands on him for his eyes to be opened. When you read chapter 22, and I has told him, he said, the God of our Lord Jesus that has appeared to you, has appeared to me for you to, to make thee a minister. Huh? Huh? To make thee a minister and a witness. Okay? So that you may know his will, that you will see that just one, and that you will be, and that you will hear the voice of his mouth. And I has given him that invitation. Are you listening what I'm saying now? Look at this, that you will, you will, that you may know his will, that is one. Number two, that you will see, you will have visions of Jesus. Number three, you will hear the voice of his mouth. Number, number four, you will be a minister and a witness of the things that you have seen and of the, of, of the things that you have seen ahead. What happened? He now put hands on him. It's from Ananias that Paul started speaking in tongues. Look at this, Act 26, when you look at it, Ananias gave Paul the blueprint of his ministry. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So he got all of that from Ananias. But he did not get apostleship from Ananias. What began was the evangelistic. Why was that? In that vision of Jesus, praise the Lord Jesus, there was a turnaround. He had a passion. He was a crusader. I hear this what I'm saying. And he was fearless. So when he turned with the same zest, he suddenly had that capacity naturally. Okay? To woo people. To command attention, which he has been having. So God saw him fit, first of all, as a preacher, a proclaimer. So that grace came on him. So from Act 9, already, you found out that Paul began to argue. that Argue from the scripture that Jesus was the Christ. Before you know it, he turned everywhere upside down. People begin to say, ah, is it not the guy that was really that? He said, and they glorified God in me. Now, don't forget, they took him from there because they wanted to kill him. Over time, in the church of Jerusalem, he was developing. He was developing. Because in Acts chapter 10, first of all, you didn't see Paul. You saw Peter. Act, Act chapter 11, Act chapter 12, see Peter, James, beheaded. Act chapter 13, Paul came up again. Now, why did Paul come up again? In Acts chapter 12, towards the last verse, he said, him and Barnabas, coming from Jerusalem, having fulfilled their ministry. So they gave them assignment. So, that means he was subject to the church at Jerusalem and has been working on himself. In Act 13, as they came together, God saw him fit for something else. Are you following what I'm saying? Because from the beginning, and there were certain prophets and teachers which were at the church that is at Jerusalem. So he was subject to a local church. Okay, and he started with Barnabas and ended with Saul. Five of them. As they fasted and ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I am calling them. That's the Greek rendering for the work that I am calling them. Come on. And what happened there? That's the apostleship, right? In Act 14, 14, for the first time, Paul was called an apostle. How did he get it? Separate him. Well, he said, after they fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them forth. The next verse, and being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. For it is this, leaders of the church that sent them forth. So in Acts 14, when they put that hand on him, God has seen that he now has a measure of the gift of Christ. And now, according to that measure, it was now attracting the apostleship. So when they put hands on him, sir, they did not even know what they were doing. 
They didn't say we confer you apostles. No, they did not. But when they put their hands on them to set them forth, grace knows what he needs. Grace talk. Acts 14. Call them apostles. Kopa Vaya. Tena Hatoshkisa. Kondoshkisa Vono. See, see, your, your closet, your secret, has impact on your public. I am telling you, like we say, I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ. It is the grace of God. Except you, you don't know what this ministry thing is about. It's not a game. It's a matter of life and death. What I'm saying here right now eh, is delivering people. There are some of you here right now. The plan of the devil over your life is failing now. That you are just here. I'm telling you. That you are just here. Some of us are delivered now from certain, certain direction. As I'm speaking now. It's not a little game, sir. This conference is not an event. People are have experiences have been better. In the spirit by the spirit. In the spirit by the spirit. Hallelujah to God. So, that's why every time you wear LMM, amen to God, you start, if I want to finish this one, I will start preparing for the next one. I'm telling you, because there are things God has seen. Have you noticed, every LMM, we here, praise the Lord, have people giving to more work of ministry. Because God finds them fit over time. After this element now, you will see certain expressions of grace in people. And it will happen from here. That's why God has called us together. It's a fortification. It's a fortification. Some of us will live here with new cloak. Hallelujah. There is something that you are now. But there is something you will become. He said, he said the Holy Ghost shall come up and you shall become another man. He said, when you yield to the Spirit, when you learn to flow with Him and follow Him, He said, you will find men made from you in the Spirit by the Spirit that will function serially in relay. In the will and the plan of God. As to take heed to the ministry that you have been given and to fulfill it. In relay. Betting, passing from you to you. You become something by the grace of God. Then, because of certain development, the Spirit of God comes upon you, you become something more by the grace of God. Hey, hey. Amen to God. Then, you, as you develop yourself, you become something more by the grace of God. And that's what determine labor. Certain labor will never come from you if you don't have the, the proper grace. This is the supernatural the ministry gift. And once you have it, sir, you can summon it. Don't you see the way I'm talking? I am talking from something grace of God has made me. I'm not thinking, I'm not guessing it. I am talking from something the grace of God has made me. Come on. And because it is true, it produces certain labor. Certain labor. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. You know, it's like the prophetic now, I'm speaking to some persons now. And because of time, I will just frame it certain way, all right? Lift your hand, get ready. Now, he said the prophetic that is somehow waning in you because of certain associations, okay, that has now brought in certain fears that what you were bold with before with the prophetic, okay? Now there are certain fears now, and you see, fear breeds doubt. He said, he said, Peter was afraid. He began to sing. He did not say, why were you afraid? He said, why did you doubt? So, fear breeds doubt. 
And because he doubted, the supernatural ceased. Because he was walking on water by the supernatural. Are you what I'm saying now? Fear came in and then he began to doubt. Praise the Lord Jesus. And he began to sink. Now what did Peter doubt? He didn't doubt that Jesus could walk on water. He doubted that he could. Because Jesus said come. So now, certain fears have come and there are now doubts that you can function. So he began to wait. But the Lord is telling me right now, lift your hands everyone. That not only is it restored, lift your hands, led to follow instructions. Not only is it restored, that you will see a greater expression of it from this hour. That even now, lift your hands, even now, that grace falls on you and it begins from here. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. That's it. That's come. That's come. That's come. That's come. That's come. That's come. That's it's about the prophetic. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's here now. It's here. It's jumping from people. You have just listened to a message of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikiacc.org. Remain blessed.